Hi, I'm Payam Jome Yazdian. I'm presenting Gesture to VEC, clustering gestures using representation learning method for cold speed gesture generation. We would like to be able to have 10 minutes long robot performances that would be pleasure and engaging to watch. The task is to produce gesture motions to accompany speech signal. Current methods use recurrent neural network architecture conditioned on the input signal to generate gestures frame by frame. The input signal could be an audio signal, speech text, or both. And other signals such as speaker style could also be included. Yet they suffer from the posterior collapse problem, which result in repetitive gestures close to the average. This is a similar problem in image generation models that produce a limited set of blurry and similar outputs. We propose a gesture generation framework that views text-to-gesture as a machine translation task between two languages where each gesture word or token represents a set of similar gesture in nonverbal language. Our method has two steps to cluster similar gesture sequences to a specific token. First, we learn a dense representation of single frames using a denoising autoencoder. Afterward, we learn a representation of gesture sequences suitable for clustering human motions. We used a denoising autoencoder to learn a lower representation of data. We picked 40 dimensions for the bottleneck since a larger size did not improve train and evaluation loss. After learning a dense representation at the frame level, we train a vector quantized variational autoencoder at the sequence level to cluster gesture sequences. VQVAE has an encoder, a quantizer layer, and a decoder. The quantizer layer has a codebook that includes a set of gesture prototypes. Uh, first, it calculates the distance between the encoder output and motion prototypes, and then it finds the nearest neighbor in the codebook and passes that to the decoder for the reconstruction process. In fact, we're using these prototypes as motion cluster centers. Finally, the decoder reconstructs the motion sequence frame by frame using quantizer layer output and a starting frame. For training autoencoders, we normally calculate the mean square error reconstruction loss between input and reproduced output. Since the argmin function is not differentiable, we need to skip the quantizer layer. So we copy the gradient from the decoder input ZQ to the encoder output ZE using the stride through estimation technique. Note that SG means stop gradient, so we do not propagate gradient with respect to that term. The second term updates the codebook embeddings and moves them closer to the encoder outputs. And the third term encourages the encoder to generate outputs close to the codebook embeddings. However, training the VQVAE is challenging since only one token receives a gradient update and the model is prone to be stuck in a small subset of tokens. To address hard vector quantization issues, we use soft vector quantization where the quantizer layer's output is a weighted combination of codebook tokens inversely proportional to the distance between encoder output ZE and codebook tokens. Therefore, each sample affects all tokens in the codebook. Note that soft vector quantization is only for the training and at the inference time, we use the nearest neighbor or hard assignment. These are a few examples of codebook tokens and clustered gestures. As you can see, we can consider similar gesture sequences as the same gesture word in the body language domain. Our code speech gesture dataset includes speech takes and corresponding gestures. Having frame level and sequence level trained model, we can perform chunking on our gesture dataset to convert the gesture streams into a set of gesture vocabulary from the codebook. First, we use the DAE's encoder to map each frame to post-laden representation ZF. At this stage, we do not use the DAE's decoder. Then we chunk ZFs to a set of N frames and feed the chunk to the trained VQVAs encoder and quantizer layer to cluster gesture sequence to the nearest neighbor token in the codebook. And we do the same for the rest of the sequence. Eventually, we generate paired samples of text and gesture tokens appropriate for training a machine translation model. So
so, we apply a purely autoregressive model of sequence-to-sequence -sequence consisting of an encoder to extract input speech context and a decoder to predict gesture tokens. We use a two-layer bidirectional GRU with a soft attention mechanism, so the decoder learns to focus on specific words rather than the entire input. At the inference time, in order to generate gestures, we use machine translation model to translate from speech text to gesture tokens. Then we use the VQVA's decoder to produce gesture frames. Finally, we use the DAE's decoder to reconstruct raw gestures from the pose lower representations. We use several objective metrics to investigate the diversity of generated gestures as well as similarity to the grant roof. First, we use the FGD metric to measure the distribution similarity of generated gestures to real gestures at a continuous feature space of a CNN autoencoder. We also introduce Hellinger diversity metric to evaluate the similarity between the model codebook usage and the real world gesture vocabulary distribution. However, the Hellinger distance only compares the accumulative number of gesture clusters. To evaluate gestures considering the order of appearance, we also apply the blue score to evaluate the effectiveness of translation in the field of NLP. To evaluate the degree of the utilization of the codebook tokens, the perplexity metric common in language modeling can be used. A larger perplexity score indicates that a larger number of the codebook tokens were used, a sign that the model generates diverse motions. We train the model with different chunk size to decide the number of frames we encode in each tokens of the codebook. Note that n equals to 1 corresponds to generate gestures frame by frame. The following table shows that n equals to 20 has the lowest FGD and also the lowest Hellinger distance to the grant rule. While its perplexity is not the highest, it is also the best in bliss score. Therefore, we pick 20 frames as our chunk size. Furthermore, to understand the contribution of each component on gesture generation performance, we conducted an ablation study. The following table shows the ablation study results on the 20 minutes test set. It shows that our proposed method is ranked first in all metrics. The objective evaluation result of the 20 minute test set for all conditions are summarized in the following table. In this table, BT is baseline text, BA is baseline audio, and BTA is baseline text plus audio. We report the average jerk or third derivative mean and standard deviation since it should follow the grand truth pattern. The diversity column shows the Hellinger distance on codebook usage frequency histogram based upon assigned label to constituent sequence obtained from VQVAE. It can be seen that our proposed method is ranked first in almost all metrics except for the blue score where it is still way better than the baseline text. The following heat maps in the continuous latent space show the diversity of the grand truth, baseline text, and the proposed method. As can be seen, our method generates more diverse gestures similar to the grand truth distribution. We also conducted a human study which shows that our model is preferred over baseline text and baseline audio in terms of a human likeness and equivalent to the baseline text and audio according to the pairwise post hoc analysis. It also is significantly better in diversity index. Oh, okay. Well, okay, whatever. And I did like, I was just like, why did she, why, why? Why have you done this to me? Why did you just disappear? Why did you stop talking to me? Like years later, uh, well, yeah, like a year, two years, maybe a year and a half, I can't remember exactly. And like the friend that I ran into was like smiling a lot. I was like, you never liked me this much. Why are you smiling? Like, why are you so friendly right now? And Kick you five times without you even noticing. But the thing is that if you've actually like fought people, if you've actually like done stuff like Thai kickboxing or things like that,
To sum up, we found that the discretized motion space causes the model to focus on longer dependencies and generate more diverse and human-like gestures. Our quantized space also allowed us to introduce a new set of objective metrics that evaluate the generated gestures in terms of perplexity, diversity, and correctness. Thank you for listening.